Hi, uh, in this uh, video I would like to show how you can get started using Commerce Tools um, TypeScript SDK. So let's get started and for this I'm going to use this um, Markdown file, uh, follow the steps. And let's see the follow the steps here and we're going to use this Commerce Tools TypeScript SDK. And it says create an API client in order to start using the TypeScript API and with the Commerce Tools platform, we need to create an API client. And it says uh, create an API client from Merchant Center. And if you don't have an account, follow these steps. Uh, luckily, I have this account already, so I can create an API client by navigating to my developer settings. And I'm going to create a new API client. I'm going to use. Uh, Arnold demo TypeScript API client. I'm going to select admin client. I'm going to create this. I'll keep this open for now. And let's see what's the next step. Getting a client credentials to use Commerce Tools API from the API client details page from previous step, copy project key, API URL scope, and auth URL, the Commerce Tools API. Okay, client ID and client secret to authenticate the request for our APK. Okay, so it says to copy the these uh, client credentials, uh, but I'll keep this open so that later I can just copy uh, whenever it asks in the next steps. Okay set up your local project and um, i already have an empty uh, directory let me go yeah uh, i have an empty directory here called demo getting started typescript sdk now i'm gonna create a, a node project by running npm init minus y uh, it should create me a package json and after that, it's suggesting me to install these um, node modules. Uh, I'm gonna copy this code and execute it on the command line, which basically has a node module SDK client because we wanna create a client and we wanna use middleware, auth middleware and uh, HTTP middleware and also in this example, we want to use a TypeScript SDK and dot n for handling our environment variables, which we're going to talk in the next steps. So this should create uh, our dependencies and download those packages. You can see here in our modules and these dependencies are downloaded. That's good. And now let's to create a new file called project.js. Okay, I'm gonna create a new project share file called project.js, so touch project.js, which should create a JavaScript file of project.js. And now I have the following code. So I'm gonna copy this, which has a create client, create auth middleware from the client relationship flow, create HTTP middleware and create API builder from CDP client. Okay, it has fetch node and dot env and getting started with common stores TypeScript SDK. So it says run the command node project and let's see what happens. Okay, I get this message uh, so that this is kind of preparation step so that uh, our modules are available and we didn't find any errors. Uh, let's move to the next step. Um, get Commerce Tools project information with Commerce Tools API. In this guide, we'll be uh, we'll get a project information. So in this demo, also we're gonna get and display the project information. Uh, my current project is here, and we're gonna display this information. And we're gonna use uh, TypeScript SDK and Commerce Tools API to get uh, and display my project information. And and it says the next step is store the client ID and client secret in a new environment variable, create a new file called .env in this directory and add the following code. So the purpose is we don't wanna share uh, the sensitive data and uh, it's a good practice to use environment variables. So I'm gonna start 
putting an end file so I should be having this environment variable uh, it says create this and it says replace the values with your client ID and client secret that you copied earlier so I did copy but it's there so I can copy this client ID and replace this and of course I can also copy my secret here and I'm gonna replace this that looks good and replace directly reopen the project.js and add the following code uh, project.js and I'm gonna add one by one by explaining this I'm gonna add this um, admin client ID and admin client secret and this is we get it from the environment variable and we are using this dot end which takes care of providing the environment variable for us um, okay the next step is adding a project key so I need to add a project key and here your project key my project key I can find it out in my API detail page so I can copy this my project key I'm gonna replace this with my project key let's go back to my next step um, create HTTP middleware for your project uh, auth URL so gonna copy this and it says your auth URL I need to replace and also I need to replace your client scope so let me first get my auth URL so again I will go to my API client page and auth URL is here I'm gonna copy this I'm gonna replace this auth URL with this and can also use the scope uh, so we get a scope this is the scope okay that looks good and we get client edit client seed create we are referencing it from the environment variables and moving on to the next step so we want to create this HTTP middleware because we want to make some requests to the commerce tools platform and we need to create this HTTP middleware and we need an API URL now so we need to replace this API URL and I'm gonna get uh, API URL here let's move to the next step and using this HTTP middleware and auth middleware I'm gonna create this client where we can make some API requests I'm gonna copy this and place it here of course I have to put this commands and I have to create an API root and create an API root from API builder of commerce tools platform client so I'm gonna get this API root and this create API builder from CDP client this is where we get this TypeScript SDK this is where we get it from the TypeScript SDK uh, node module and I think the last part is executing the code and calling the API root uh, with the project key and let's see uh, for the demo I'm gonna create uh, trying to explain to you the details so I'm gonna create a async function I'm gonna call this so we're gonna call async function and now we have an API root and the, this is the benefit this is the benefit of using TypeScript now I get a I get a options to select suggestions so I don't have to look into documentation I can just see what options are possible and as I can see from this example it's with project key so I can press the control space again and I can navigate I want to select and and it already giving me a hint that it's expecting a project key and a string uh, with child arguments and I can just pass that my project key which I already defined here to this project key and I get a bunch of different methods I can call and we just need to get this project information so I'm gonna get this get method and I get I need to execute this because I wanna run this code um, later we wanna console this information and I can use this dot then 
I get the data and we can just console it. I'm gonna copy the same and also catch in case any error. If we get into error, no error, we get into some error, just copy this console of error. And of course, we want to prevent, uh, we want to use it under the try catch block so that we want to catch if there are any errors while executing this uh, API root. So there will be one more block errors. And finally, we want to say the project information is retrieved. How we get the project information here. Okay, so I think we are good to go now. And in this example, let's give it a try. Everything looks good. Now, I just have to run, let's see, let's see the docs. And of course, I replaced your project key, your auth URL, your client scope, and your project URL. And we are good to go. And I can just copy this code and execute it. Let's see what happens. Yes, we got this uh, project information and my project key name and countries I supported and currencies I have, the languages I support. Uh, just a quick thing, you can see here, I support two languages, English and German now, and you see that the information is been retrieved and created and trial until this is a trial project. And, and there are some more additional information so basically the example works now and, and I hope this tutorial is useful for you to play around with. And again, just wanted to re-encourage uh, you to use this TypeScript SDK where you get a lot of auto suggestions and a lot of hints what, you would, what options are possible, what's the arguments to pass and what function to methods to execute it's pretty handy and um, make your life better and uh, less bugs uh, hope this session was useful thank you very much